So it's official guys, Sea Doo have announced the 2025 Sea Doo Spark is going to be called the XP and is 180 horsepower using the E-Tech two-stroke engine. Wishful thinking, maybe? Cross everything, guys, because in less than a week's time, Sea-Doo are going to announce the 2025 units, and with Yamaha and the Jet Blaster just doing their huge announcement, poking Sea-Doo, now is the time to react, guys. You know what to do, hit the subscribe button, and let's get into the video. So guys, with it being less than a week until Sea-Doo do the 2025 announcement, I wanted to give you my official prediction, giving you some educated guesses as to what Sea-Doo could do to react to Yamaha after what some people are saying is a little bit of stagnation. Yes, I know that's maybe unfair. Sea-Doo did give us some new feature updates, but we need performance. Ultimately, we ride these machines for performance. So let's get into it. So for the 2025 Sea-Doo, I have a couple of predictions, okay? And I'm gonna run through them systematically. Prediction number one is that Sea-Doo will bring back the XP model name tiering, and they'll really lean into the fact that the XP was always the flagship model. And I think they're gonna borrow some of their technology from their snowmobiles using either the E-Tech platform, which I'll get into in more detail, or the 900 Ace Turbo platform. Now for anyone that doesn't know, and maybe doesn't watch my videos, the XP in the 90s was the king. It was the Mac Daddy. Everyone wanted the XP. So much so that when Sea-Doo moved over to the GSX and the RX, People still love the XP and the X4 hull. Now with Yamaha introducing the Jet Blaster and leaning into their heritage, I think it's gonna spark some enthusiasm maybe within Sea-Doo to lean into their heritage and bring back the XP. Now people ask me all the time, how would they deliver us a faster spark? Now there's two options in terms of power plant. Now I'm basing my theories on the most logical thing Sea-Doo would do, which would be to lean into their Rotax engines using their snowmobile machines. Now this is where it gets quite exciting. We've got two stroke E-Tech engines and we've got four stroke ACE engines. Now the obvious one would be to stick with the four stroke 900 ACE engine, but in the snowmobile configuration, I have it in front of me here, I've got lots of specs and I'll put them on screen. We've got the 900 ACE Turbo R and that's 180 horsepower. We then have the 900 ACE Turbo 150 horsepower, the 900 ACE Turbo 130 horsepower, and obviously then we've just got the 900 ACE that we're seeing at the moment, which is the 60 and 90 horsepower. Ultimately, if you're looking at the 90 horsepower non-turbo, that's basically a map to get you that 90 horsepower. And not a lot of people realize this, but if you have a 60 horsepower spark, when you get it remapped, you're essentially just delimiting it. So try not to get sucked into too much of the 60 horsepower variant. But in essence, we have a four stroke option on the table there, whereby the engine doesn't look dimensionally that much bigger than what the space you would need to fit it into the spark. And what gets really exciting is I've actually now tested the spark. If you haven't watched that video, watch it here. And a number of people have affirmed this to me. If you take the seat off of the new spark, dimensionally is slightly larger and we have that new engine access now. So logically, you should be able to get a 900 ACE turbo in there because they clearly have the engines available to lean into. Now where it could get even more exciting and what I would almost like to see because what better way to reboot the XB than to say we've gone back to two stroke is to use the E-Tech platform. Now on the E-Tech, again, I'm gonna go through the specs in front of me. We've got the 850 E-Tech Turbo R, 180 horsepower, and that is a two stroke turbo. We've got the 850 E-Tech 165 horsepower, non-turbo, and we have the 600 R E-Tech 125 horsepower. And there's actually one more, the EFI 600, and that's 85 horsepower. Now it doesn't make a ton of sense to move from the 900 A's proven power plant that we have in this market at the moment to go to something like a 600 two stroke 85 horsepower. Really is gonna make most sense if they go for that 850 turbo or 850 non-turbo. I probably think the 600 R E-Tech 125 horsepower or the 850 E-Tech non-turbo are the logical ones that they would probably look to put in there. Now, if you look at this engine, it doesn't look like a big power plant, which is super exciting, right? Because all of this is gonna be predicated on whether it can fit into the Sea-Doo hole. So when everyone asks me, Joe, is this a pipeline dream? Absolutely not. Maybe if Sea-Doo didn't have the engine available to them and they had to design and engineer this from scratch, it would be more of a pipeline dream. But the fact that they have two options available to themselves, either the two stroke or the four stroke, the romantic idea, like I said, is two stroke. And obviously the more maybe realistic idea is to stick with the 900 ace so that's the engine side of things that we could very likely see in a week's time now let's talk about the aesthetics now back last year when i saw the 24 announcement i actually made a video watch it here when i said the spark x is coming and i called it the xp and i did a mock-up where i did it in the lime green and the purple which was a throwback to the gen one anyone that knows the generation one xp 1991 92 was this green and purple color and i thought that would maybe be a nice way to you know to show a 
nod to the heritage. They did it with the RXP a number of years ago, but the more I thought about it, I think that the love affair with the 90s, the high watermark for most people is the 1996 XP. Now that's gonna be the yellow and pink colorway. Now spoiler alert, sadly I don't think Sidu will ever go back to that graffiti style of graphics. Sidu has a much cleaner aesthetic now. Graphic design's evolved a lot since the 90s. If you look at the way that brands typically have evolved, they've become much more minimalistic. So if Sidu were to ever introduce a XP homage, it would very much be a much more dialed down version. That's why in this mock-up that I've did here, I've literally taken a 24 Sidu Spark tricks and I've taken that into Photoshop and I started to get creative with changing some of the colors out. I think the predominant color is still gonna remain black. With the Polytech that Sidu use, they typically always use a predominant black base and then they obviously jazz it up with additional colors. So it's plausible we could see some yellows and pinks in there. Now the only thing that might push them away from not doing this colorway is the audience that are maybe buying into the faster spark blitzing around on a pink and yellow XP is maybe something more you know socially acceptable in the 90s it was a way more like flamboyant period the 80s even more so but the 90s was a period renowned for crazy colors I would personally love to see it because I love two strokes as you know if you've hit this channel then watch all of my videos I'm all about the two strokes and the crazy colorways from the 90s but it's not out of the question Yamaha did it in 2022 with the jet blaster when they had that yellow and that teal and it was super punchy and it looked epic yes they did dial it back for the next year so maybe there is something in that what were the cells like but even if Sidu didn't go full hog and go crazy colors from the 90s they could still bring back the xp brand name ultimately if you look at the rxp which is a good indicator right that came after my beloved XPDI in 2004. And that RXP brand name has actually continued all the way up to obviously now where we've got the RXP with the 325. Yes, they've changed the logo and stuff. My romantic idea is that they bring back the exact logo from the 90s. I think that they might, you know, like as much as my mock-up is really exciting and appetizing and the people that I've showed it to are like, yeah, I want that. I think they might actually do something a little bit more subdued. They might bring the XP logo back, but it might just be a nice new clean typeface and stuff. I don't know is the honest truth. Now I have one other theory to round out this video. Guys, as always, I want you guys to put in the comments what you think might happen. If you think that I'm literally, you know, out of my tree and this is never gonna happen, or if you have some other theories, put it in there because I really do wanna know. Ultimately, a lot of what I talk about is a combination of talking with you guys, whether it be through Instagram, Facebook, or the direct comments that I get. And it's basically just starting a line of dialogue and hopefully see you see some of these videos and they actually think, oh God, this guy keeps making videos about bringing back a faster spark. So my theory number two is that they don't do the XP, but they bring back the tiering. This is what I thought was gonna happen before I saw Yamaha. And I'm not just saying it because Yamaha have done it. I've said this in previous videos. In the late 90s, if you use the GSX, which is the perfect example, you had the GS, the GSI, the GSX, and the GSX Limited. And it was the perfect way Sidu tiered up models. Now, what I think is gonna happen with the Spark ecosystem is you're gonna have the base model, 60 horsepower, which is the entry level ski, a little bit like Jet Blasters, bog standard, model then you'll have the 90 horsepower tricks and then you will have a limited or the xp i think they're the two terminologies that cdo have historically gone with and they've kind of stuck with that it makes logical sense that they would either go xp or limited and for the limited variation not to put a pin in everyone's excitement people say to me all the time let's get a 1630 with 180 horsepower i would love that to happen and it plausibly based on the numbers i've just read out so for example the 850 e-tech turbo is 180 horsepower the 850 e-tech non turbo is 165 horsepower it's plausible to get those sort of numbers but i don't think cd are going to give you the extended vts as we know it right now for the tricks i think sadly what's going to happen is if you endorse buying a tricks 90 horsepower you're buying in to be able to do wheelies popping out of the water jumping waves and you have that cap at that 90 horsepower because they know people would likely kill themselves otherwise if we then step up to say 150 horsepower 165 or 180 horsepower i think what they're going to do is they're going to market that more as a performance uh, race ski that doesn't necessarily do as many tricks. It's the same sort of dimensional size and it'll be a spark as we know it, but it will move away from the trick platform and the trick branding. If you think about 2017, when they introduced the tricks, it was all about the foot wedges, the adjustable handlebars and the extended VTS. That was almost like the bolt on functionality to the base spark and it made plausible sense for us. If they were to bring in a limited or an XP variant, which was a faster spark, I think you would almost see Spark and the bolt on graphic would literally be XP or limited. 
and they would market it with a reduced range of ETS, so you couldn't have 150 horsepower jumping over a wave and potentially doing 60 miles an hour and spinning it, which I think would, as exciting as it would be for me, it would test even the best of a rider. So I think they are the three tiers that I would expect could happen. Guys, as I've said, put in the comments, I hope you like this prediction video. I've made this video specifically because it's literally imminent until the announcement comes out. So I'm super excited. I'll be watching eagerly. Sadly, a lot of the promotional material thus far on Seedoo's social channels has all been around fishing. So I might just be ignorant and choosing to feed into my romantic idea that Seedoo have to react to the Jet Blaster. I feel like they do, but whether the development partner and CDU see it as a threat, I don't know. The initial comments I've had on my previous video, if you haven't watched it here, talking specifically about the Jet Blaster, people are quite pro the Jet Blaster. Now I'm kind of on the fence. I like the look of it. I'm just personally not overawed because whether you're looking at a Jet Blaster or the 24 Spark or the Gen 1 Spark, it's too slow. So even though Jet Blaster and Yamaha have done a great job of introducing their equivalent to the Spark, it's only a 53 to 55 miles an hour ski with the Jet Blaster. So it's not as if they've smashed through the threshold that we were all waiting for. So that's why I'm not as excited as maybe some people with the Yamaha. I also get it. Some people love Yamaha, so they don't care about what CD we're doing. They're just happy to now have the equivalent to the Spark. I've had so many conversations with people that say, Oh, I hate Sea-Doo or the Sea-Poo, which for me personally, sea for me is like the sexy premium brand. It's not saying Yamaha isn't, but for me, having a sea is always a statement that you're buying into innovation. The way that I've responded to some of the comments on my previous video is sea in 2014 took all the risks, right? It's not particularly admirable to wait 10 years later watch closely and then just emulate it, almost copy it. That for me is not exciting as a product. I just wish Yamaha would have done something around the Wave Blaster, smaller craft and completely, you know, stayed in their own lane. I've said all this before. Guys, put in the comments what you think is gonna happen with the Spark. I'm crossing everything. I hope you like my theories in this video. And as always guys, whether we're talking about new, the philosophy is still the same. Let's keep the classics alive. And I promise there's tons of classic content coming super soon.